Sponsor, we're super relieved. Late yesterday afternoon, we got our final delivery of goods to help complete our batch patch. In the front, we've got all of our bark. We've got our remaining soil in the bags behind there. The thing that we're probably most relieved about that actually arrived yesterday was the wood. We're gonna be using these to build protective boxes on the actual raised beds themselves, which we'll get into later. And I'm also gonna be building purpose-built structures for our running vegetables. So all the things are beginning to fall into place now. Now we've just got our fingers crossed that marshals are able to get our vegetable plugs to us. The first thing that we're gonna to do today is we're gonna start building our protective boxes for our raised beds. Uh, as you can see, we've got this temporary net on, which we've discussed earlier. It's there just to prevent our cats from trying to use this as a toilet and to also keep pheasants and uh, other animals out from rummaging through this. Uh, so it is a temporary measure. Uh, the cloches that we bought off eBay were absolutely rubbish. They would just blow away at the first strong wind. So those weren't a viable option for us either. So we've decided to build uh, these protective boxes. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have probably two per bed. So our beds are three meters. As I said, the first one I'm going to build today is going to be one and a half meters uh, in length. So basically all of these uh, areas that we've planted out, our seeds are in 50 centimeter areas, which means that the one and a half meter box is going to cover the first three portions. So basically where we can see uh, the greens coming up there, it'll basically end in line with that because it's all measured out perfectly at one and a half meters. And the box is going to be a meter wide uh, to work there. And they'll be 70 centimeters high uh, so that they can accommodate things like uh, kale and some of the, the bigger vegetables that actually do grow to uh, slightly bigger heights. I'll now go and build the bottom portion of the frame then we'll do the top and the two legs and we'll see how that goes and then if it's uh, strong and successful which obviously it probably should be then we are going to apply the ultra mesh to that and then it's going to go over and start protecting our seeds for the wood we're going to be using two by ones so for the first one you obviously have to plan a little bit more i've planned it to uh, have as little offcuts as possible because you obviously want to maximize the wood that you've purchased. So I'm now going to start trimming the pieces of timber to the length that I need. And then we're going to start screwing them together. So the first step to the box frame is getting the base done. So all we've done is we've taken four pieces and we've put them together. They're all screwed in from the sides. Now what's going to happen is we're going to run some pieces upwards that will create the top portion of the frame. Uh, and we will put those in and we'll just check the rigidity of that to see how strong it is. Uh, I think it might wobble a little bit, but we'll see. Then we'll build the top portion of the frame. We'll put that on top. And if that is still a bit wobbly, then we'll just have no choice but to put some cross supports uh, in the corners. Uh, but we'll basically take it one step at a time. So the first box is coming along really well. Everything has taken shape. The legs that are coming up are very, very wobbly despite having two screws driven through the bottom. So we've done the little angled supports uh, on all sides. Uh, what now remains to be done is to build the top portion, which will just again drill in through the top and we'll put four supports with those. Uh, and once that's done, We'll have a fully completed box, which we will then proceed and put our ultra fine mesh on top of. I've had to change direction a little bit. I've run out of 70 mil screws, so I can't finish the boxes, which is a little bit frustrating because I really wanted to finish two of those first. Uh, so I've just placed those on order with our trusted supplier on eBay. So those should arrive in the next one or two days. So in order to keep the project going forward today, I'm going to be building the structures that are going to support our various runner plants in the raised beds themselves. So this year, initially, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be growing runner beans and cucumbers. The cucumbers we want to train and run vertically. So we need structures that are going to be strong enough to hold them. And I'm also toying with the idea of potentially growing pumpkins. Probably not this year, but uh, we do still want to build a structure that's going to be strong enough to support fruit and vegetables that are going to be really, really heavy going forward. 
So late yesterday afternoon, we completed our heavy duty runner posts. They were all about 1.8 meters in terms of length. They buried uh, maybe 20 or 30 centimeters down. So it's gonna give our runners uh, a lot of space to, to go. We have had to reinforce them at the bottom. They are really, really sturdy now. So giving that a good shake, they're not moving anywhere. But we did have to put these two supports down at the bottom just to make sure that they just got an, a little bit of extra support by, by doing that it has really uh, enforced them they are very very strong uh, we've got some heavy duty jute it's a bit of a tongue twister that's going to be going up in the next uh, day or so uh, we'll now have to take our plastics and just wrap that timber that we can see the supports and the actual legs that are going into the ground because this is treated timber so we don't want any of those chemicals leaching into our soil but they're looking really really good from a distance uh, they actually uh, look great so not only are they functional but they're actually providing uh, a level of aestheticness towards our vegetable patch success that is all of our raised beds filled with soil but there's no rest for us. We're now moving on to the next step. We've pulled up all of the cardboard. It was just too rigid and too firm. We've laid it down with paper. In terms of the paper, this is all excess packing paper that we had left over from when we moved into the property. We never got rid of it. We kept it for a purpose, which we have now found. So this was just a really good way of recycling the paper. Now we're moving on to laying the bark onto the pathways. We're laying it down at five centimeters. We've got the wheelbarrow here and we are getting loads of uh, bark coming down. Today we're back and working on our boxes. Our screws have arrived from our provider on eBay. I do highly recommend them. Go visit our blog. I'll provide the link and the details to them. They sell Timco screws. And what we really like about them as a, as a seller on eBay is that they sent everything uh, Royal Mail first class, which means that if you place your order in the morning, you'll probably have it the following morning if worst case probably 48 hours That's very much been uh, our experience with them as we can see our box is taking shape really really well uh, I'm now just uh, using our new screws To drive in the top portion of the frame through there uh, I will then again test the rigidity of the structure itself if it's lacking Again, we'll put in the little corner supports and then that'll be our first frame done. So that's the first box completed. So let's quickly discuss why I'm going to be making these boxes. So given where we live, we are surrounded by quite a lot of agricultural land and we are concerned about pests. So uh, obviously what we presently have is a raised bed. I've just put the netting over as I discussed in a previous video just to keep uh, the cats and uh, other wildlife out of our beds. However, this solution doesn't look particularly neat, uh, nor will it keep certain pests out. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be building a variety of different sizes of these boxes, which are going to be positioned strategically across our beds. And these boxes are going to get covered by an ultra mesh. Obviously things like runner beans, uh, climbing cucumbers uh, and other vegetables like that are not going to be covered nor will our tomatoes but other more delicate crops that, are, that we're going to have going such as spinach uh, and lettuce that that can get affected by things like slugs snails flies etc we are going to have covered by these frames and we're going to have the ultra mesh covering those they are not going to be fixed into place they will rest on top of the soil as they are here uh, obviously these beds haven't been prepared yet so we will make sure that the soil is completely level uh, so that there isn't really a means for insects to get in underneath uh, and that will basically be uh, the the concept that that we're trying to achieve so that is the first of our boxes completed we have covered it with a product called ultra fine veggie mash from a company called Gardening Naturally. This product allows for light and air to pass through it quite freely, but the mesh itself is very tightly woven 
which means that we're going to be keeping out quite a lot of pests so things like butterflies won't be able to get in there a variety of flies won't be able to get in there it should also keep things like slugs and snails out so this is uh, i feel quite a, a good step forward to protect our uh, produce inside the veggie patch what we're also going to be doing as an additional step is that for certain uh, crops that we're going to be growing it's going to be a lot easier to now take our thermal fleece and actually just lay it in there and then put the box on top of it which means that it's not going to blow away it's going to uh, stay a lot more intact this uh, veggie mesh product has actually been designed uh, that you can actually lay directly onto the bed and actually cover the vegetables uh, in that in that way uh, we've just taken it a step forward because I just feel that having boxes like this is a little bit better because we can allow the vegetables to grow a lot taller and also protect them throughout their whole uh, growth phase as opposed to having the mesh lying on the ground and uh, allowing uh, things to potentially crawl underneath it and obviously well not that it's going to stunt the growth of the vegetables but you know th this provides our veggies with a little bit more freedom so that is the first box done uh, there are a lot more boxes to go and over the next day or two we are also going to hang up our jute netting on our climber structures that we've built uh, and probably this weekend the first of the runner beans will go into the ground i also have uh, some cucumbers that have arrived now from marshall's those will probably go in too so we're most definitely on our way. The next thing that we're going to be doing today is we're going to be putting up our jute netting on our heavy duty runner pillars that we've built in four of our raised beds. We searched long and hard for a natural product. Obviously there's a lot of netting that's available that's nylon or synthetic. Uh, obviously there's also the provision of potentially using things like chicken wire, uh, but we settled for this natural jute netting from a provider on eBay. I'll be providing the link on our blog. We want something that is going to be quite heavy duty and heavy wearing because in addition to our runner beans, which are obviously the easiest thing to grow, I'm going to experiment this year uh, by growing one variety of courgettes uh, that are going to grow vertically. And I also intend to put in one trellis with cucumbers that grow vertically. And then we'll allocate probably uh, two or maybe two and a half trellises to our different runner beans that we've got. So that is the plan. Uh, this particular natural jute netting is one meter wide by five meters long, which works great for us because our pillars are a meter wide and they're about a meter 80 high, which means that we'll have excess netting on on both sides so we're actually going to drape the netting or the plan is to drape the netting up the front and down the back so that if you have got um, a runner bean for example that does want to grow to two and a half meters or three meters or however high they want to go we're hoping that they will basically uh, scale the netting all the way to the top and then have the potential of growing down the back uh, this will also obviously provide them with a, a fair amount of aeration uh, which will be quite essential for things like cucumbers and courgettes that are uh, susceptible to things like blight and other illnesses. So by not having them growing on the ground, growing them vertically and providing them with some sort of aeration should provide them with a, a really good structure. We're probably going to staple gun these to the pillars and we'll see how strong they are when we do that. So we've completed our runner bean trellis. As mentioned earlier, we used the natural jute netting. Uh, I did say we were gonna think about using the staple gun. We decided not to. We've gone ahead with these hooks instead. They galvanized. We've just taken a hammer and my wife has been able to, because she's really good with working with fabrics. Basically, we just kept this nice and tight and we tacked in all of these hooks up all the way across our trellis and down the back. And in order to create an almost A-frame type scenario at the back we've uh, allowed it to run that way so it'll allow for a little bit more ventilation if we do have a runner beam that goes the whole way across the top and maybe halfway or three quarters down the bottom 
there'll be ample space and air uh, for it to stay well ventilated and to prevent any mildew or other issues occurring. The other important note to add is that uh, when you unroll this for the first time, you need to stretch it out uh, to give it its shape because it does uh, crunch up a little bit. Uh, once you've got that nice and tight, as we said, get the hooks in. And if you want to go with the A-frame type scenario, it is important to add these little uh, strings at the back just to keep it, or just to help it keep its shape um, as it's progressing down the back, almost like uh, a football goal net. So that's it for part four of this video. Thanks for watching. Tune in for part five when we start planting the first of the Marshall's veg plugs and we'll also put up our gate. Thanks for watching. If you want to continue getting these videos, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. See you on our next video. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. You can also follow us on Twitter or check out our website at myhomefarm.co.uk. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you have any suggestions for any other videos you would like to see, please leave a comment. We hope to see you on our next video.